Now this view is stood atop um, Breen Down in Somerset and if you're sort of looking that's Brent Knoll over there in the distance you've got the steps there that go down to the beach and then over there in that direction you've got uphill and then to the left of that western it's a simple view but let's, let's see what I can do with this I've got all the usual gear muddy pallet here ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red um, I think I'm going to be using those there. Got three quarter inch flat, large on Ransom Ake, number three rigger. There's a piece of card, plastic card here in case. Of, well, I will be using this just to scrape out a few rocks, but I'll try not to overdo it. Water jar with a nice lip for taking off a lot of the excess water off the brush, the rest of which I take off by wiping on a tea towel, which I hold underneath the pallet like so. The paper is 15 by 11 Fabriano held on a piece of plywood with these bulldog clips. So I'm going to start as usual using the uh, large hay brush to wet the paper all over. It's, uh, it's, it's basically my way of stretching it. You can stretch it before you start but I like to uh, do it as I go along. Um, I don't know why I clean the brush then, I haven't put any paint on. But I'm going straight into raw sienna. No particular order to it, just bash it in. All the way down the bottom. Don't try and make, you know, make it nice and pretty and all regular patterns. Just nice, loose, random. Clean the brush. Ultramarine. Maybe a touch of Payne's Grey if you want. And then just brush that across. Again, just sort of random patterns as you work your way down to the bottom. I'll do for that. Clean the brush again. Take the uh, excess off with your uh, towel. And then a lizard in crimson. I'm going to try and make the sky a bit more interesting than it is in the picture. Because it's just like a plain a plain bluey colour so I'll put some clouds in I think so uh, where should we have the cloud? now the, the horizon's about there so if I start off quite big and then just make them narrower and narrower as I get towards the horizon and then best to just leave those I see the paint running down the paper so I just want to give it a quick dry that paint is wild. I don't want to dry it completely, just enough to stop it from dripping. That'll do. You see the paint accumulating at the bottom. So I'm just going to take the water solid accumulating at the bottom of the paper, so I'm just going to take that out. And you can see how the paper's stretched already. That was flat to start with, so it's come out so far from the board. So I'm just going to refix that now before I get cracking on the rest of it. Just pull this bottom bit over. Okay, so it's a slightly more interesting sky than it was before in the photograph, just all plain blue. Bring it so. You don't have to clean the brush at this stage, because I'm, I'm going straight back into all the colours I've just used. Into all those colours. Not masses of water, just enough water to hold, hold the um, hairs together. Now I'm going to put in, I'm going to start with Brent Knoll itself, which is... sort of the most prominent thing on the horizon and then just, just trying to level that out just checking yeah, I'm going to get to that there because the foreground is going to come across there so it's got 
look level, something like that. And I'm just going to go into the raw sienna, back a bit more water because I don't want it to too strong. And now I'm going to go into the green, or the, the yellow rather, to make green. And then I'm just sort of dip, dip, dab, dab, just hit and miss. And then just trying to bear it as I'm coming down. Just keep going from side to side. More yellow. Now I might clean the brush now and just go just purely yellow on its own. And touch of ultramarine, just darken the green up a bit. It's a bit browny down there. A bit browny. And then sort of okay, there's like the sort of mud, muddy banks on the water. Right by the, the water's edge now. So just pop that in and we'll clean the brush and then well I can just I can just see the sort of just the edge of the sea so I'm just gonna just a little bit of blue just to that's that'll do because the rest of it's going to be covered up by this foreground part just gives the impression and you got the sea against the land there so that's the background in so I'll just give that a quick dry. It's a lot closer to us, you generally put the stronger tones nearest to us. So I'm going to go in, what should I start with? Uh, let's go with a bit of lemon yellow, ultramarine. I don't want too much water. I just want to just keep bearing it now as I'm going along. I want a nice sort of crisp edge on this Contra just contrast with the uh, background and obviously once you've gone too dark you'll have to lighten the uh, clean the brush again and, and see I've gone dark now now I can't I've got no chance now getting back to light so I've got to clean the brush if you want sort of lighter colours and then you see I'm back to light again now. Remember it's always light to dark with watercolours. Just flicking from one to the next, maybe touch of lizard and creams in there. Ultramarine. Um the pine's grey, I'm giving dark again, so to get back to light I've got to clean the brush. Clean the brush. Take the excess water off and then back into your light colours, raw sienna, lemon yellow, maybe touch of lizard and crimson, ultramarine, lemon yellow again, a bit of burnt umber down there. And you just see, just constantly varying your colour, it just makes it more interesting. Now 
there's a few rocks so I'm going to go for a rocky cut, I always like burnt umber, ultramarine yeah, sort of rock there, a bit darker these are a bit darker than that some rocks there I mean, get, get some rock tool which is a piece of card It always works best where you got the darker, darker parts. You get the most contrast. And you've got like a big rock there. Remember, don't do them all the same size and shape. Try and vary it a bit. And there's a few rocks that sort of come down this way. And sort of make a, like a kind of a path sort of like sort of like that you can sort of path way down like that that's it I ain't gonna do any more than that and then you can always pick a few grasses up We've got our fence posts, so I think for this I'm just gonna I'm gonna switch to the uh, three quarter inch flat. Okay, burnt umber, ultramarine. And we got sort of one about there. So I'll keep them small. There's one up there. On there, and then switch to the rig app. Same, same colours. And then we've got some little bits of um, I don't know if they're sort of barbed, barbed wire, whatever they are. Try and stop people from. I'll try and stop the dogs. Unfortunately, there's a there's a, there's a post at the bottom of it, and it says that about on average about one one dog a month falls off the uh, falls off the edge and dies, which is a bit of a shame. Although why you'd why you'd let your dog roam free on the top of this is, is beyond me. Um, just a couple of birds in there. A couple of birds, uh, somewhere on the other side. Just very faint. Let's stick another one down there. And I think I'll, uh, I'll leave that one at that. Over there, stick your signature. Remember, don't stick your signature right in the corner because you won't see it once you got the uh, once the mains on in the frame. Call that one finished. Well there's the finished painting so let's have a quick look at the photograph see how it compares. You can tell that the compositions I've, I've kept it quite the same but the first thing to notice is the uh, the sky. See how like, you just got like a, a uniform blue. I've just tried to make it more interesting with the uh, the ultramarine raw sienna and then the, uh, the, the clouds put in with a uh, mixture of alizarin crimson and pines grey, remembering to make them sort of narrower and narrower as they reach the horizon line there where you can just see Brent Knoll in the distance so you can see just little bits of detail there but I don't, you don't really mess about with that sort of thing you can see at those sort of distances you don't see any any real detail, it's just keep vary, vary the colour and it keeps it interesting. All these little unpainted bits of white just just uh, keeps the viewer guessing. Could be anything. You can see how rocks feature quite prominently here in the foreground, and they can be uh, done quite quite simply with the card, with a quick scrape. And 
And then if you look, the only real man-made feature in the scene is the uh, fence post right here in the foreground. Just very simply put in with the uh, the rigger and the uh, the flat. But then, like I say, with the uh, the only man-made feature, it just provides a nice contrast with the the rest of the natural features. Well, thanks for watching. Keep practicing. I'll see you again soon.